So first, the slowdown is overseas more than in the U.S., particularly mm -hmm. in Europe, and there are concerns about China. So the, so the main worry is that we get spilled back onto, onto the U.S. economy. So far, the U.S. economy on a standalone basis is fine, but the U.S. economy cannot overcome headwinds from the rest of the world forever. You know, my view on the Fed from... Divergence becoming convergence. We've yeah. talked about this before. Right. My view from day one, and I've said this and you guys have covered it, is three hikes is what I thought they should do this year. Mm -hmm. They ended up signaling four and reiterating four. So between what they should do and what they end up to do, there's a big difference. It is very hard for the Fed right now to go back to three hikes for this year. If, if they do... Yeah, the market is completely baked in, this idea that there will be a raise in December. Correct. And if they don't, the market is going to say, wow, e the economy is much weaker than we anticipated. Or, and or, the Fed is much more open to political intervention than we thought. So I, I think the Fed has put itself in a bit of a box, and they're going to have to go through with four hikes. But my preference from the beginning of the year was three, and then see how the global economy evolves. Not just the U.S., but the global economy. You know, it's not just the global economy or concerns about weakness overseas washing back on our shores. We also have some of the self-inflicted things that we need to consider, too, and those are tariffs. If we do what the president suggested again yesterday, uh, is very likely, and raise tariffs from 10 percent to 25 percent and then make it not just $250 billion, but $550 billion worth of goods that we're talking about, what, what are the impacts of that? So first, you have to make a judgment whether these tariffs are part of the journey or the destination. Mm -hmm. Okay, my view has been they're part of the journey. That just like sure. Korea, that, Mexico, yeah. Canada, China will understand that the right reaction in this world is not the tit for tat. The right reaction is to make concessions and acknowledge that there are issues with forced technology transfers, with intellectual property theft, and aim for the fairer trading system. That, that's, that's still my expectation. But I can tell you, every time we delay it, mm -hmm. there's concerns on both sides. In China, saving face becomes a bigger, bigger issue. And in the U.S., this is not just an economic issue. This is becoming a national security issue. Washington has discovered that economic tools can be used for broader national security goals. So, you know, it really is important that we get a positive signal out of the G20 meeting between the two presidents. Why do you think that China is likely to blink? Because, because that has it, not been the signal we've seen at all. Correct, because the alternative is much worse. Same reason why Mexico blinked, Canada blinked, Korea blinked, and Europe is going to blink. The alternative is worse. If the U.S. is willing to incur the cost of a trade war, which it is, okay, then the implications for the rest of the world are much worse than for the this U.S. This is in your 70 percent scenario. It's going to be a small win for us, small win for them. Nothing really changes. Business as usual, but both sides get to pretend that they, this is not the, what, what was it, so, so what, was your what was your potential for a really big deal? Yeah, so the 65 is, 65. is, is you tweak it a bit like you did with NAFTA, yeah. you tweak it a bit and when you go back to business as And you think that's like still likely? That's still likely. There's a 30% chance of a trade war which, which would throw parts of the world into recession and slow us down significantly. We're still in a skirmish, we're not there yet. We're not right? there yet, no, no, we're in a skirmish. Okay. And then there is what I call the Reagan moment is when you start a strategy that ends up redefining the landscape. That's what Ronald Reagan did in the 80s with the military buildup versus the Soviet Union right. at the time. Right? Now, there is a possibility that you can actually reconfigure the global economy. It's not an overwhelming probability, but I think we, we have to keep it on the radar screen. But that 5% that chance is what you're talking about solving some of these national security issues. I mean, the most likely scenario is, even though Washington may look at this and say that there are real security implications that come out of the trade practices that have evolved over the decades, most likely scenario is that doesn't get fixed, in your opinion. No, I think what, what, what will get fixed are first the joint venture requirement, and that's important. Uh, meaning that if you are an American company, you have to have a Chinese partner right. and in going the process, in. And in the process, you have to transfer all your technology, business and your models, right. Right. business strategies. You transfer a whole lot, right. right? And that's the cost of doing business, but companies have, are discovering it's a very high cost. But companies were the ones who agreed to go ahead with that to begin, from the beginning. They did, because everybody is still seduced by the notion of the biggest market in the world. Right. 1.3 billion people. Yeah. Got and it. going through the middle income phase and spending more. So, so people are very seduced. By, plus, China is redefining parts of Asia. 
the One Belt, One Road initiative, the Asian Infrastructure Bank. So there is, the companies are right to look at China and saying, wow, largest market in the world potentially, and it is redefining an important part of the world. So it's going to be 70%, not 30%. That it's probably not going to be... Four. 65. You don't really 35, think the five, 5 is likely, though. It's... it's Five is what five is, right? It's a possibility. It's not a probability. But that gives you three. That gives you seventy percent. Correct. That's not the bad seventy right. percent chance but I'm of, getting, a, of a good outcome. More, but the more we continue with this, and that's why I keep on saying, this weekend's G20 is not about the G20. I mean, the fact that now we're just hoping that they come, can come up with a communique mm -hmm. shows you how far we've gone in terms of backwards in terms of multilateral coordination. What the, what the whole G20 meeting is about right. is about the, the sideline bilateral right. meetings that normally very few people pay attention to, but this one is going to be critical.